Hello everyone, Angelica Chuquan here, trainer at Pragmatic Works. Today in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about another one of the AI visuals inside of the Power BI desktop. In this second episode of my series, I'd like to talk to you today about the decomposition tree and how you can use it to help in your data analysis. So let's go ahead, let's dive right in and get started. Before we begin, are you planning on taking the PL300 certification exam? Then check out CertXP, a fun new way to prepare for that PL300 where you will get exposure to practice exam questions. Visit prag.work slash angelica40 and you'll save 40% on an annual on-demand learning subscription and get access to all of CertXP features. Now, onto the video. So here I have a report that contains the AdventureWorks data set, everyone's favorite bike retailer. Here is the results of using the decomposition tree with our profit and a couple of fields from our different dimension tables. So this is the results of what it is that we're gonna kind of build out and walk through here today. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm gonna drop off full screen so we can focus here closely on the data. I'm gonna remove these dimensions that I've already populated here so that we can start from the beginning and talk through this process. So the decomposition tree visual in Power BI allows you to visualize your data across different dimensions. It will automatically aggregate the data, allowing you to drill into your data into those dimensions in any order. And the way that it works is gonna be kind of up to you. So first let's talk about the different things, the inputs that are needed to get this visual up and running in your report before we begin. So that decomposition tree is this one over here in your visualization pane. So it's down there a few rows down and just a couple over. Now, right here inside of the visualization pane, what is needed to input for this decomposition tree to work are a couple of things. The first is in this analyze field. You need to drop in here the metric that you want to analyze. This should be a measure or an aggregate of some sorts in order to have this working correctly. Then in the explain by section, you wanna add here the fields or the dimensions that you would like to analyze that metric by to explain by. So here I have the profit measure here. That's what we are gonna analyze here, what we wanna break down a bit further. And we're gonna explain this by a few different dimensions. I've got color from my dim product table, model name also from the product dimension, region from that sales territory and country from sales territory. So that's what we have here in this field for this visual. Once you drop your measure in, whether that be profit or another measure that you wanna analyze, then you can go over to the visual and you can choose now how you want to analyze this by. So there's a few different nodes here. And so you'll see that these plus signs allow you to choose your path, how you wanna split the data, how you wanna drill into the data at these different levels. So I'm gonna hit the plus sign here to reveal our options. And you'll see here, there are a few. So you could choose either high value or low value. And these two fields right here, these two options are a part of the AI, the artificial intelligence that's kind of taking place in the background here. So you could use either one of these and using either one of these is gonna be a part of the AI splits. We're gonna come back to AI splits and we'll talk about the high value and low value choices here in just a moment. Right now, let's go ahead and choose the specific dimensions we want to actually drill into and to explain our profit by. So you have the option to let AI do the automatic thinking for you, or you can go in here and choose those dimensions that you wanna analyze this by. Let's first take a look at explaining our profit by country. So when you select country, you will see here that it is showing us that the US is contributing the most to our overall profit. So we can see that here very easily. You can also see Australia is just below the US. 
at about 3.6 million, UK falling behind Australia, Germany, France, and Canada down here at the end for us. So we can take a closer look at any one of these nodes. If I wanted to take a look back here at the US, I can choose the plus sign again to branch this off. And I can choose an additional dimension. Let's go ahead and select region and take a look here now. Now I can see that for the US, the Southwest region seems to be doing very well in contributing to our overall profit. As I continue to look at this here, it's interesting to see the breakdown by region. Now we can choose a further to break this down and select an additional node here and choose to break this down by the next dimension. Let's go ahead and select product name or model name, excuse me. And then after we select model name here, look, you can see here all of the models and how they are contributing to our overall sales for the Southwest region of the US. Now the next one here, I'll go ahead and since we're going along the same path here, let's go ahead and select this one more time and choose color. Now you can see here that it is showing us that silver tends to be the uh, favorite kind of color here as it seems contributing to our overall sales for Mountain 200 over black. Very close, but we can see that difference there. Now, what if I wanted to choose a slightly different path? You can hit the X here to remove a level and you can go backwards and take a look at one of these other levels here. Maybe I wanna look at Roadwood 50 and see what color is contributing most there. Well, you can see there's not too much here. We've just got red as the color, but I can click backwards and let's click backwards one more time here. And again here to return to that country dimension. Let's take a look down here at one of our lower dimensions. Let's look at Canada here and see what's going on. So if we choose to split the data here now from Canada, I can go ahead and select one of these other fields. Let me go ahead and select model name here now. And I can see Mountain 200 is also one of our top contributors to our overall sales. But notice the sales amount here in Canada. If we go back and compare that to the US, there's a significant jump there. Let's go ahead and take a look here now. I'm gonna go backwards and let's take a look at using the AI splits. So if you want to take a look at these dimensions and choosing the field you wanna explain by, country, model, name, color, or region, that's what we have in here right now, you can choose that specific path that you wanna indicate. Now, what if instead of choosing the path, you wanted to allow AI to do the work for you? Let's go ahead here and choose one of these AI splits. So I would like to see what is contributing to our profit when it is high. So what is contributing to the overall high value of our profit. So what field is contributing the most here? And so what's interesting is we're seeing that the AI split chose model name over country as the most interesting or the highest contributing factor. So that's interesting here for us to take a look at. I can go ahead and go back to Mountain 200 and I can choose how to split this again. And I could continue to choose the high value here for AI for my AI split, or I can choose to mix this up a bit here. So you can go from high to low in between these different levels. So let's go ahead and take a look here now and let's see what's contributing at the low value here. So, wow, now it's showing us the region and it's showing us that central region in the US is contributing, is having the least amount here of contributing to our profit. It's gonna break this down by the factors that it finds most interesting and that it thinks that you should be paying attention to because they are significant, either significantly high or significantly low. Now, what I wanna point out to you is as you are selecting the AI splits here, you can see that the line for AI splits is this dotted dash line here. But let's take a look at, if I were to go ahead and select France and I go ahead and choose color here and I specify this instead of letting AI do the selection for me, you will see that it is more of a solid line here that we get instead of the dash line there for the AI splits. Let's go ahead and take a look here at locking the values. So if I wanted to lock any of these values, every single one of these here, if I lock these and then when I publish this up to the service and I share this in a workspace, 
where I share this with users assigned to the workspace as that viewer role, they're not gonna be able to go in and manipulate this in any way. So we can go in and set this so that it is locked and locked those filters so that they are unable to change things. We can lock those in place if we would like to, but let's go ahead and unlock them. And I'm gonna go back here a bit and let's choose Mountain 200 and let's let AI choose for us and let's see what's contributing to Mountain 200 at the high value there. What is showing us when our profit is high? What do we see? So we can see here Australia is now appearing here for us and we're seeing the sales here for Australia and Mountain 200 seems to be the highest for the overall region. And that's showing us here because it's breaking down the US in, the, in those different regions there as well. Let me go ahead and hit that split again and let's select high value again. And we can see that black seems to be a more popular color here for this region. Now what's interesting is that this visual will update based on filters that you make on selections on the page. So if I go over to my calendar year and I choose a particular year like 2007, notice the switching that took place. Silver seems to be doing better for 2007 than our overall sales. We could even go in here and pick a particular month and focus down to the month level on our profit for the Mountain 200 bike when the region is Australia and the color is silver. So that's what's really neat about this is it's going to be responsive to selections that you make on the page there, on your report page. The neat thing about this visual is it's also going to allow you to drill through to another page. So let's go ahead and very quickly here, I'm gonna add a new page down here at the bottom, and let's go ahead and just set up a quick drill through page. And for this, I'm gonna grab a couple of things here I'm gonna grab my uh, full date alternate key here. We'll go ahead and rename to date to make that a little bit clearer for us. I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop that in. And then let's go ahead and pull in some of those fields that we had on our de decomposition tree visual. I'll bring in the country. Let's bring in the region. And let's also bring in the model name from the product dimension and color from the product dimension. Let's bring in all those fields there. So when you're setting up a drill through page, what we can do is we'll go in here and I'm just gonna add a little bit of color here to get this to pop a little bit, make it a bit more interesting for us to see. Now, when you are adding a drill through page, you wanna add a field here. And for us, since our decomposition tree is looking overall at profit and how these different dimensions affect our profit, over here on this drill through page, we can go ahead, look for that profit and drag and drop that into this field. Now we have that back button. I know that this is set up as a drill through field. I'll go ahead and name this as a details page so that we can see that here on the report. You can hide this so that the drill through is actually going to be hidden from view and so in the report view, this page will not appear except for when users are drilling through on the data point. So let's go back to the decomposition tree. And if we take a look at any of these uh, dimensions like model name, if I go to model name and mountain 200 and I right click here and hover over drill through, I can now drill through on the model name. And then we can see more details for that Mountain 200, you can see here, that's the only product that is shown. And the filters are also respected that I had selected on the page for the calendar year and for the month of March. And I can see that Mountain 200. So it's really neat, it allows you to drill through on here as well. So that's also an option when you're using the decomposition tree. Now, a couple of things to note about the decomposition tree. The maximum number of levels that you can have here is 50 and the maximum number of data points that can be visualized here any at any one time is going to be 5000. Now I hope that uh, you don't try to put that many levels or that many data points um, because it's going to get a really, really crazy here and it'll be a way too difficult to analyze. So you would want to avoid that at all costs. Now the decomposition tree 
is not supported for on-prem analysis services. AI splits won't be supported in Azure analysis services, Power BI report se server, or publish to web. And so that's something to keep in mind there as well. All right, everyone, that's it for this second episode in my AI visuals and Power BI series. I hope you enjoyed this kind of quick explanation and use case for the decomposition tree. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. I'm happy to come and reply to those later on. Maybe they'll be a inspiration for my next YouTube video. But if you haven't already, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button below so that you can stay up to date with all of us here at Pragmatic Works. And make sure to check out my code in the description below to get a special discount on our on-demand learning platform where you can access courses on Power BI, Azure, Power Automate, Power Apps, Project, Excel, and more. And with that on-demand learning subscription, you can also gain access to Cert XP, one of our newest offerings in helping you prepare for those certification exams like the PL300, the AZ900, the PL900, and more. We're constantly adding and looking to update Cert XP as well as our on-demand learning platform. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you next time.